Okay, so this week for the Unreal Engine uh, update um, in Blender, um, we're going to be, uh, well, I basically learned how to deal with um, shape keys uh, for facial morph shaping for animation, which is needed for uh, mocap, and it's also needed uh, to make animation in your face a lot easier. So I delete the cube. Um, I'm going to use the MB Lab uh, character generator. I'm using EB muscles, setting it to um, Caucasian male. Portrait light. This is a plugin for Blender um, made by a individual, uh, and it's a really great pro plugin. Um, so then we go ahead and create character. And it takes a second. So now we have this um, character that um, I was just in Unreal Engine, so I'm used to Unreal Engine's controls for some reason. Okay, anyway, so we have this character, and we can um, address all kinds of parameters such as age, height, mass, body tonnage, all kinds of things. Um, I'm just going to set it back to the default because right now I'm not making the final character for any of... Uh, yeah, I'm not making the final character for the actual animation. This is more of a proof of concept so that when I do do things, I know the logical way of getting it done. Anyway, so you have this character um, and we have, uh, we have to finalize them. So we have to save the backup of stuff and freeze textures and stuff. So let's just go ahead and pick a location. Um, I'm just going to go to where I've been saving my projects. semester and we'll do blend shapes and this will be test four In test four, um, it's called test four. Four. Um, I'm saving this information because um, it's basically texture information. Um, if I want to move it to Unreal Engine or whatever, so I have the textures. Uh, Blender can do real time rendering in the viewport which I'll show you, works great for uh, when you're working on the projects. It's not the best for when you are uh, doing animation. It slows it down a bit. Um, and I'm running a high-end machine, so that, that says something. Okay, so right here, it's um, so now you can actually see what the current textures and stuff look like on this character. Um, so let's go ahead and just focus on the face. The rest of the body doesn't really matter at this point. Um, yeah, just the face. Okay, so we have, we could create a facial rig, but that's not necessary because um, this plugin already has um, facial expressions mapped out, and these are very similar to shape keys, but they're not shape keys, sadly. Uh, you can put them, keyframe these things, like anger, into uh, the timeline for animation purposes, but that's not going to help with mocap, and I'm trying to do facial mocap. Um, so it took me a long time to figure out this. Um, basically, to make shape keys, um, we have to go into his uh, mesh, I believe. There we go. So we go into its mesh, and then we go to here, 
and then these are the shape keys that he has but these are not actually the same shape uh, expressions and stuff that we find within um, the thing I was just showing you you know this is um very very fine-tuned stuff so when we go back into um, object mode we have access to this stuff so say he's angry there's uh, multiple of these shape keys that create the anger expression um, you know there's a bunch a few of them so what I need to figure out how to do which I found out from online is to combine these shape keys into a new shape key um, you can actually make new shape key for mix so I can make a new shape key and then I can relabel it and call it anger or angry uh, which I'd probably do lowercase um, but you get the concept here um, I can turn this off now and then I can change the value of the shape keys here. So the fact that you can blend shape keys to make um, the shape keys that they the expressions and the um, you know the pronunciation of a K, for example, um, saves so much work because normally uh, for mocap depending on the software for facial mocap you have to generate something like 40 or 50 uh, shape keys to get enough um, expression from the face um, that is triggered as you're moving your face to make it lifelike otherwise it's going to be a bit robotic um, and I wasn't looking forward to having to create 50 different um, expressions by um, vertex editing the face into many, many expressions. You know, a few, no, it's no problem to get it well done, but like 40 or 50 of them, that's a lot to deal with. Um, so that was the main uh, technical thing I did. I also did some research uh, this week. Um, so this is just last week's thing, but I'm just using the links uh, to show you. Um, so, when looking for the mocap system, which I'm going to have to order one real soon, whichever system I go for, which I'm leaning towards one strongly, which I'll let you know. Um, obviously, I'm not going with the real expensive ones. The NIME, I think it's going to be way too much trouble for what it's worth. The Radical Motion, it's a great new um, way of getting things done, but because you don't need any... Um, This is a Radical Motion website, and you see how you can capture video and then you get uh, your 3D character you know, running around. The problem here is you see the feet are shifting around. They're not landing on the ground properly. They're going beneath the ground. Um, and this is a well, this is a pretty good capture from what I've seen. Um, most captures are worse than this. And I don't believe they have any cleanup software for cleaning up that motion. And if you have to clean it up in like Maya or Blender, it's a lot more work than cleaning it up within a mocap software to begin with. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of why I'm thinking to avoid them at the time being. Um, basically, radical motion would be great for a very cheap, cheap way of. Um, people doing machinima um, that don't need perfect animation or really professional looking animation. Um, it's probably one of the cheapest ways out there. Um, okay, so the nerve, uh, neuron motion, I was considering it. They have two different suits. Um, one suit that's out of my price range, the pro suit. And then they have the version 2 suit. The version 2 suit, um, 
The problem is the sensors tend to go bad easily and they have bad tech support from what I've heard from customer reviews. And I noticed that, which I'm not 100% sure about this, but from the videos on YouTube that I've seen people using it, the easing in and out of uh, motions is not the best. Um, from what I could tell, um, easing in and out of motions in mocap, um, it, it was actually much better with um, Rococo. Rococo's um, the second cheapest mocap suit option out there. And I actually <clears throat> talked to um, a Rococo representative uh, and I got a live demo it's not working um, of the suit in action and I asked them a lot of questions which I have a full 45 minute video um, screen captured recording of our conversation which you can also watch if you want it's long so you might want to skim it um, but they have great customer service um, why it's not responding. Maybe my internet's slow or something strange. Um, basically, they have great customer service. Um, their suit is like a, a one-piece suit, so you stick it on. Um, so setup time is really quick. They are coming out with mocap gloves. I don't know how much it is going to cost yet and when they're going to come out, so I may not be able to use it for this thesis project. They do have their own facial capture system with the iPhone X and up, but their facial capture system is not the best system that I've seen, so I'm going to use one of the other systems. But their suit is good. Um, it's not great at stairs. It's okay at jumping, I found out. Um, and you can lay down on your back, which was an issue. I saw a video of one... Um, guy who went to a gym and he was using the suit and the sensors weren't wor working when he was laying down bench pressing and when he wasn't doing uh, pull-ups. I think that's actually magnetic metal uh, issues messing with the sensors and not the fact that you can't lay in the back and you can't jump. You can jump and you can lay on your back with the system, um, give a bit of a dem demonstration, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm thinking to go with the suit. I'm probably going to order it later this week if uh, everything goes right. Um, I just had some warranty uh, related questions that uh, he's going to get back to me. Um, like, you know, what happens uh, to the suit um, if it's past its warranty date? Um, how much does it cost to fix a sensor or to replace a sensor on it? Um, he basically... Um, Yeah, he basically said that um, he's going to look into it. The actual sensors in all these smart suits are actually really cheap, the physical component. He's saying that like each sensor is only like, cost them like 10 bucks. Um, it's the software that the most value is in, and um, the base software is free with Rare which a lot of the other systems, it costs money. The more advanced um, software can do virtual production. Um, uh, as you can hear, my baby's uh, needing a, a nap, so I'm gonna have to get going. But, um, yeah. But anyway, um, next week I'm probably gonna work on um, M cloth for character uh, clothing design, and I'm gonna look more into. Uh, continue looking into anything I need to for anything I need to order yeah like the facial mocap I'll have to figure out